Obviously, my dad playing baseball, I kind of grew into it, and I just had a love from, from one years old where I just loved the sport. It was just something I loved to do, and it, it never became something that I had to do. It was just something that I loved, and getting to do that now professionally and as an occupation is just a dream come true because, you know, it's, it's still that little kid in me that just wants to play baseball. I was lucky enough to be able to have my dad coach me from 12 years old on through high school because he coached my travel team and so just getting to go that long playing baseball doing something I love and then having my dad there beside me the whole time and coaching me and it, it was a blast and you know it, I think it really grew our relationship even closer you know just the the long rides and to, to tournaments in Florida and Tennessee and just being in the car rides and having conversations and um, I think I was eight years old and I still remember I was in the truck with my dad going to he did batting lessons and we were in the car and I think I asked a question like, you know, we go to church all the time, but you know, what does the relationship with Jesus really mean? And, and we had a long discussion and he asked me, he said, have you ever brought, have you ever asked Jesus in your life? Have you ever accepted him as your Lord and Savior? And I was eight years old and I was like, no, I haven't. And I remember to this day when I was eight years old in the truck, in the passenger seat, I, I said a prayer to myself and I invited the Lord in as my Lord and Savior. And to this day, I still remember exactly where we were on the road. and. And it's just little things like that that God just puts in your heart and, and it doesn't go away. I always went to church growing up. I, I was brought up in the Word. You know, a lot of people talk about in their testimonies that come to Jesus moment where they, they drifted apart or, or never knew God growing up. And I was lucky enough to, to know God as, you know, as soon as I can remember from my family and my grandparents. And um, my grandparents have been huge in my life. And, I'm lucky enough to still have all four grandparents alive. Uh, my mom's father has always been someone that I've looked up to and he, he's a man that I want to live my life after and, and model my life after and he's a man that puts God first and Jesus first and seeing the way he's lived his life and he still continues to live his life, I think that's one of my biggest inspirations and, and role models. You know, through the college process of recruiting, it was, it was crazy and that's something that I remember my dad and both my mom and dad saying, you know, this is something you got to put in God's hands. And um, it came down to, to UNC and Wake Forest, and God led me to Wake Forest. And I couldn't be more grateful. It was, it was such an incredible opportunity and, and just an incredible school, from baseball to academics to just extracurricular in terms of, you know, athletes in action. And it, it was the perfect fit for me. When I decided to go to Wake Forest, I wanted to do it because I knew that they were a team that was so close to being good again. They, they had a history of being good, the program was building, and I wanted to be a part of that. Freshman and sophomore year, we were getting closer and closer, and then finally my junior year, we had a breakthrough where we hosted a college, we hosted a regional um, for the first time in 15 years, I think. And just to see Winston-Salem rally around us and Wake Forest fans rally around baseball for the first time in that long, it, was, it, it all culminated into that one night and um, it was actually my last game played at Wake Forest at home was in the regional. So to end at home like that was, was pretty incredible. Getting drafted by the White Sox and then being able to go back to Winston-Salem in my first full season was just something that, you know, you look all the way back to junior high school when you committed to Wake Forest and then you look in your first year of pro ball and you're playing back in Winston-Salem. It's like just seeing the way God works is, is pretty incredible. You know, the stands can be packed, but at the end of the day, you're playing for God, you're playing for Jesus, you're playing to, to show the world what He can do. And, you know, He's using me and my platform to, to go out and use the abilities that He's given me. You know, I work hard and, and, and put the practice in, but at the end of the day, He's given me the ability and the talent to do what I do. If I said that I go out there and, and I play, you know, just for baseball, or just for the money, or just for the fans, you know, I'm not, I'm taking all the talent that He's given me and, I'm being selfish and taking it for myself when I'm not the one that's that's put me in this position. I mean, he's the one that's that's done this for me, so it would be unfair to go out and and just say this is all me, this is all whatever. I mean, this is this is God's working. This is he's putting me in this place to to play for him. You know, none of us are perfect, and God died for us to take away our sins, to cleanse us. And there was only one perfect, and that was Jesus. And He died for us, and He cleansed us, and through Him we have eternal life. He's made the sacrifices for us, so that even though we aren't perfect, we live through Him, and we go through His Word, and we share His Word, we too will have eternal life. And I think that's the most incredible thing there is. 
I'm Gavin Sheets and I play for him.